G'day everyone, uh, popping in for my usual uh, Thursday live show. Um, got a stack of stuff to go through with you today. Um, just adding a little bit of a pre-show because I'll let people get in. I haven't given much notice um, about the uh, live show today. I was actually out this morning. Um, so I've just popped in, just got it organised so we can all have our usual chat. Um, so say hi if you are here in the uh, live discussion here. Love to see what you have to say and who's actually here on board. Um, I will stick a thing down below. Hopefully I can get the time to put all of the details about when each thing starts. Um, typewriter Passion is saying hi. So we've got a few now starting to pop in, which is great. Like I said, looking forward to having a chat with you guys. Just having a coat today. No uh, beer o'clock for me today. It's too cold. Well, it's, what is it? 14 Celsius at the moment. Uh, Langston said, uh, how good timing. Um, type brand of passion, <laughs> just put a, a clap. I love it. Um, also, check out the video I put up of Kiara again yesterday. Let me know if you've watched it, what you think. Um, I really enjoyed shooting that video. It was great fun, um, sort of showing winter in Melbourne, so that was quite interesting. Posted that yesterday. Um, Hexotech's here. Hey, David. Um, Zoe at Moments here. Chris is saying hello. It's a two corona day today in Los Angeles. I bet it is. Um, <clears throat> only advantage is for us, we're halfway through winter. Um, so basically, I've, we've only got another few weeks and then it'll start warming up again. I'll be able to crack, his stub, crack a stubby with you guys again. So look forward to that. Um, who else have we got? Tom's here. Uh, Mickey Blue Eyes is saying good day. Dan's here. Mike's saying hi, David from. Oh, no, that's Dan. Uh, Mike's saying, how's life treating you? Good. I may look a bit weird because I've <laughs> I've had these uh, little, well, they're not cancers, but they they could be pre-cancers if you don't watch them, um, burnt on my head. I've had a stack burnt on my head up the top up here today. They use this gun with dry ice in it. One of the beauties about living in Australia is I think, well, not one of the beauties, but we do actually have one of the highest rates of skin cancer in the world. I think it's our sun's stronger than everywhere else, I believe, and that's that's why there's so much skin cancer down here. Um, so I'm pretty conscious of getting it done. So every year I go and visit the skin specialist and she's burnt a stack of uh, things on my head. So, <laughs> so I don't know whether you can see them or not, but I've had a stack burnt on me. It's a problem with being so blonde in a country uh, where there's so much sun like this. Um, yeah, but, ah well. So they're a little bit sore, but I thought I'll pop it anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> if I look a bit strange, you guys will get over it. Um, Mike's just saying hi, yep. Yeah. Uh, Boston 2 said morning. Um, Langston said I can confirm what Chris Imura reports, is that's about the drink, uh, obviously. Uh, nice and warm over there. Peter Kent said, perfect timing. Hi all. Barry Street's also saying hi as well. Like I said, we're getting a stack on board now. Um, Used the A7 III yesterday, and I did it differently this time. Um, I used the um, A7 III with the 35 1.4 on yesterday. Uh, loved it, actually. It was really good. Normally, as you know, I've been using the 55 whenever I've been doing videos. Um, but yesterday, I used uh, this for a change. I thought that I'd use the 35 mil focal length to just see how it went. Uh, I really do love the aperture ring, how you can um, open that up clicklessly. Uh, and I wanted to shoot at 1.4. So the video that I actually put up yesterday of Kiara, um, which is often shot at 1.4, and the focus was amazing. Like, the, the focus you can get now out of these cameras is outstanding. I'm just laughing. What did someone say there about my head? Um, so the light's a fire on your head. <laughs> Oh, it hurts when they do that spray though. My God, they just spray it and it burns like crazy and they have to do it a few times. Um, Langston said, so the animals in the sun are trying harder than normal in Australia. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I definitely know that Australia has the highest rates of skin cancer in the world, I believe, by far. Uh, I think it's something to do with how much sun we get down here and how strong the actual UV is uh, here in Australia. Um, what else have we got? Um, good day, my twin negative. That's Iron De Brown. He's here. Pinoy said, "Hello, David. Just came from Bali and used the Tamron 28 to 75 exclusively with the A7R3 for my vlog. Fantastic camera. I know how 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 not a uh, fantastic lens. How good is that lens? And I'm going to talk about the firmware update too today. 
So we'll talk about that. Anyway, how are we going for people? I'd love if you give me a thumbs up, guys. It just makes sure more people pop on. Um, I'm just going to go on to the photography and videography school uh, just to let people know that I'm um, live. Uh, like I said, I've just got back, so I haven't had the time to organize uh, any of this. So let me just put something in there. I always like to do that, seeing that's the photography site for, for us. Uh, let me just scroll over and I'll show you the site where we're at it. Um, this is the site. Please join it if you haven't. I know I keep going on about it, but it's for you guys. So uh, please join it. This week's task is actually macro. Uh, no, I wanted reflection. Last week's was macro. And you can see here how many people are um, submitting stuff for this reflection task that we've actually got in. Uh, it looks really beautiful, actually. And I'll choose the winner, and they go into the header actually at the top. Um, we have fun for each week's task. Uh, last week's task was actually this one that I put in there. Um, the last week's was slow shutter speed, so that was last week's one. Uh, let me just clear off the pre-show. Um, I'm just going to put in here that I'm live on YouTube. Oops. Uh, and obviously, that's where I love people to communicate with me. So, you know, if you are actually um, wanting to communicate with me, this is a great site and also for help. Very positive. I don't allow anyone to be negative on there. If anyone's negative on there, they're going to get removed. Um, so, because there's too many sites out there where people get bagged and stuff like that if they're new to the industry. And, you know, I don't want any of that on there. I just want positivity in there. Uh, you can share your Facebook pages. You can share your Instagram feeds, your, uh, your websites, YouTube videos, everything. So, yeah, please join us on there. Anyway, so let's go about today's um, news. Let me just bring up the latest news. And I'm just going to go and switch over for a second so I can find this to see when we start the show. G'day everyone. Um, just wanted to actually uh, do a bit of a pre-show early on. I, I popped on uh, without really much notice this morning at all. Um, so I thought I'd still pop in and do the live shoot. I was lucky I got back just in time. Um, basically, uh, if, you, if you are wondering if you can see them, I don't know how well you can see them. I have had a number of um, sunspots burnt on my head. Um, oh, Chris Muir, thank you so much. Thanks for a great advice and answers for all the questions. Buy a few Coronas. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, really appreciate that. I certainly will. <laughs> Thanks so much, mate. Um, yeah, I've had a few um, sunspots burnt off my head and also on the top up here and in the back, it's really sore. So I've had them burnt off uh, this morning. <laughs> so hopefully I don't look a bit too strange. Um, it, it, there's nothing wrong with me. It's just you have to get them off before they could turn cancerous. So it's just preventative. Um, so it's something I encourage people to do. I actually had one person contact me. I can't remember who it was last week because I had a, when I, I hit there with uh, a, um, a rock when I was doing one of the shoots and he actually contacted me to say, David, you should get that checked. I think he thought it was a, a cancerous mole on my head, but it was actually only a scab. But thank you for that um, just caring really anyway. So yeah, that's what they are anyway, if you're wondering what they are. So please don't message me saying you need to get something checked. <laughs> I've just had them checked today. Someone just said it's the ozone layer, um, over Australia is the reason why we have, um, such high skin rate cancers here. It's the highest in the world in Australia. Um, we also have very powerful UV here uh, and the sun's very powerful as well. Anyway, so let's go to news stories because we've got a stack to cover. Now, we'll leave uh, questions at the end. So if you do want to have my attention, please leave, as you see there, which is the uh, at David Osler. It'll make sure that um, I can answer your questions. Um, while we're still in this sort of little bit of beginning, check out the video I put up of Chiari yesterday. Um, I did put on a video using the a7 III and for the first time I've used this lens for that type of thing. Normally I've been using the A9, oh sorry, the A7 III with the 55 uh, on there. Uh, but yesterday I thought I'd try to see how the um, 35 mil went uh, in video. And I handheld quite a bit of it. So I did use the gimbal, I used the Moser Aircross in that, but I also handheld quite a bit too to see how it went. I was surprised how 
you can really hold these cameras handheld and still get a really nice result. And I did that yesterday. And I wanted to try the autofocus on f1.4. So a lot of that video that you'll see if you go back and check the previous one I've just put on, is using this at 1.4 and the focus was outstanding. Look, it's not as quick as the 55, but it's still amazing and easily uh, enough to be able to use in a wedding or, or something like that. Uh, and it worked wonderfully. I think this might be a fraction heavy for the Aircross, the Moser Aircross, but it handled it okay. I just don't know if I'd want to do that all the time. I think I'd probably go for um, the 35 2.8 if I wanted to shoot the um, 35 mil mode. But I did want to try the 35 at 1.4 to look at that separation. And like I said, have a look at it if you haven't looked at it. Uh, and I'm really happy, the separation is just gorgeous. And when people talk about colors, I was using the standard profile yesterday in that, and you can't tell me when you look at that that the colors are beautiful, vivid, uh, the skin tones on Kiara are gorgeous. And that was just using the standard profile with very little correction. I just made sure I nailed my exposure. And I did occasionally lift the highlights and, uh, and manipulate the shadows a little bit. But there was no, um, nothing done for special correction or anything like that. Uh, basically, it was just a standard profile straight out of camera. So when you look at that video of Kiara, you're really looking at that almost straight out of camera. So let me know what you think about it anyway. If you have um, looked at it, let me know in the comments because I'll get back to it later on. All right, so let's get to some of the news. Um, so first article that I want to actually look at you with is, now the, the reason why I thought I'd bring this up was because I did buy one of these books a while ago, it was Gary Freeman. Let me know whether anyone has actually purchased any of uh, his books because I actually bought one a few years ago. I think it was the A7S to be honest. It was, all, it was when I first moved over to Sony. Um, and I did find his to be really detailed, and he does keep putting out, um, if you do buy the PDF books that he brings out, he does keep updating them as firmware is released and things like that. So he seems to give great books. Now, I haven't looked at this David Bush, I think that's pronounced, but I just wanted to give um, that Gary uh, Friedman a, a bit of a plug, um, because his, his in-depth... Um, reviews are very, very good, or his books are very, very good. And I think it's something, uh, if you wanted to check out some of his books, if you were new to, say, Sony, and you wanted to see how to use the cameras, you could really use his books. Uh, but yeah, let me know if you've had any of his books. Like I said, I, I only bought one. It was only when I started to come over, and it was an A7S, I think, uh, book. But really liked it. So that's the first story. That was a fairly quick one. Um, the next one, I wanted to talk to you about this. Cheers, everyone, even though I'm only drinking Coke. I noticed Casey um, reviewed the um, Sony uh, RX100 Mark VI. Um, basically, he said that it was, he believes it's the best camera uh, available, point and shoot camera available. The only thing was, I think he said it should only be around about $700. I think he said it was way overpriced for uh, what you're getting. Um, I'm not sure whether I believe that. Look, it is a lot of money, but the technology that's built into inside these cameras is absolutely outstanding. And, and to be honest, I've been love. I've loved shooting now with the RX uh, 105 that I've got. I still don't regret not getting this version um, because the more I've been using the five, the more I've appreciated uh, having that internal ND on. And boy, does that make a difference when you're shooting video. Uh, even stills, you can you can start to go, you know, use slow shutter speeds and everything just with the internal ND. Uh, you will be able to probably get an aftermarket one, but it's still something extra that you've got to lug around. The internal ND is amazing on that camera. And also, I have been using it a lot uh, indoors, and I really appreciate the 1.8 aperture. Like I've said to you before, I almost think, and, and I think it's been proven now that they've released the Mark V version A, that they're going to keep these cameras tandem side by side. Uh, if you're after a low light, uh, you want the ND filter, you want the Play Memories apps, well then you have to go for the Mark V version. Uh, if you want that amazing um, uh, focal range up to 200 mil, well then obviously you have to go for this. They re really, although it's expensive, they really would be a perfect couple to take on holiday with you. And if you were dealing with low light at night and stuff, you could use the version 5. If you were doing more of the stuff during the day, like sightseeing and all those sort of things, uh, you could be using the Mark 6 because it's got that amazing zoom lens on. 
Uh, I have seen, a, 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 I saw a review this morning, I think it was on DP Review, there was a discussion there saying that the longer lens definitely had a consequence if you were shooting uh, indoors because the ISO, you did have to raise the ISO, so they were definitely noisier than if you had the 1.8 version. That's why I'm saying if you had a, a two of these cameras, uh, they'd be the ultimate pair of cameras between them. Um, but... Um, Anyway, I think his review is very positive and it is an amazing camera and I really like mine. I mean, there is differences between the two of them now, but I really adore using mine as well. I just stick it in my pocket and off I can go. Um, whether it's worth $700, I don't think it's overpriced for the technology that you're getting inside that camera. Uh, I mean, basically, it's like a Mini A9 that you're getting there. Amazing focus, fantastic video. You're getting all the log profiles in there. And the great part about using this is when you buy this camera, like I was originally tempted and I thought I might go for something uh, like a Panasonic or something like that, but having the same menu system on, on, on all of my cameras has been absolutely fantastic and I've really appreciated that it works exactly the same way. So there's no learning curve there because I already know so well how to use the Sony cameras and then when I bring this up, I know exactly what I need to do and it's fantastic if you're a Sony shooter to have this as another camera to your um, basically to be able to just pull out and use exactly the same way. And to be able to shoot this in manual and have all the controls that you're basically familiar with, all the menus that you're familiar with, uh, really is fantastic. So let me know whether you think that is too much expensive or do you think Casey's right about saying, you know, he thinks it should be around about $700. Uh, I'd love to know your opinion. I don't think this market's gonna last much longer though, to be honest. Uh, I think eventually, obviously, it's going to be taken over by, uh, by uh, your iPhones and things like that. Uh, so it is only a matter of time before that happens. Um, but why it's still there, this really is the pinnacle of, of those point and shoots. It, it is by far uh, better than any other type of camera that's, that's out there for that type of thing that that does. Uh, anyway, thought I'd just talk to you about that. Um, this is another one. Now, this is something I'm really tempted with. Let me know whether any of you guys would be interested to, to try some of these Venus Optics um, lenses. This, this one here is the um, 10 to 18 uh, millimeter lens. Um, again, the manual focus, but I'd sort of, to be honest, I do miss using my Voigtlander that I had on the GH5. Uh, I did really like to have that manual focus ring, and that might be one of the good things that if I do eventually get some Sigma lenses, well, at least I've got a true, um, manual focusing uh, lens, which you know doesn't go by uh, fly-by-wire. But to have these sort of lenses, I bet this would feel amazing in your hand. It's probably beautiful and sharp, um, and they're really well made. Um, so I am really tempted sometime in the future to get some more um, of these manual lenses, something wide in the, in the 12 millimeter range or something like that. And, and being so wide, Manual focus is not an issue on these lenses anyway because everything is basically in focus. Uh, let me know if anyone has ever used any of their lenses to, to see what the quality is like, but I, I would think uh, that they're going to be amazing. I think they're saying that these are going to be available to start in September. Um, but, yeah, I mean, they just look beautiful though, don't they? I mean, stunning looking lens. you got the 100mm macro there as well. Um, that would be gorgeous too if you were dealing with macro. Most of the time with macro, I'm using manual focus anyway. I mean, Sigma, um, I've got the 70 mil now, which I'd also like to have a look at, which apparently is really great. Uh, Gerald is saying in our photography videography group, he's posting stacks of images. Um, and I might show you those just so you can see how good this lens is, the 70 mil. Um, oops, I've got to go back to Facebook. Because I'd love to show you this because it, it is really nice if you're after a decent macro that's not too expensive. Um, let me go back to here. I'll see if I can find Gerald's work because he's been posting a stack of stuff in there and it looks really sharp. Um, where are we? I could search for him, I suppose. Uh, yeah, he's been posting all these, all of these macro shots. Now these are all with the, uh, with the 70 mil. Um, let me just make this a bit smaller. Um, but it seems to be beautiful. Now he's saying that it's really nice. He's actually saying uh, this was 70 mil uh, f/8 ISO 800. Um, 
And then th these are different versions that is actually shot. You can see how sharp that this lens actually is. Oh, they're the crop version. So that's how much he's cropped these up. It is really sharp. Um, so it looks like he's having an awful lot of fun uh, with this lens. And, you know, and I asked him to do some testing uh, and he seems to be having a great time with it. When you look at the enlargements, it is super sharp. But anyway, uh, that's the 70 mm um, uh, Sigma lens. So if you're after that lens too, uh, there's quite a, uh, Gerald's put quite a few reviews on our photography videography school. Um, yes, yeah, so I just thought I'd share that. Uh, anyway, that lens there is 100 mil macro, 2.8. Remember, you don't need really um, anything over 2.8 because usually you are shooting with higher uh, f-stops due to the fact that the depth of field is so shallow so having a 2.8 is not a big deal I mean you could even go f4 and it probably wouldn't be an issue either I'm usually shooting my macro stuff like a, I'd with wedding rings and things like that at f16 sometimes um, so yeah anyway I thought I'd share that with you that that's going to be available in September and keep firing questions away guys I will come back to you um, this was an interesting one that I saw. Uh, if you do have old film and you wanted to digitize them, uh, there's a new uh, tool for Sony cameras that's been released um, where you can digitize your film uh, as well. I think that this isn't released. I think it's actually just on Kickstarter. Yes, it is. It's on Kickstarter, uh, but it looks like it's a really nice system. Um, and again, I'm not sure when this will be announced, but I just thought I'd share this quickly. Um, and what a great idea if you are digitizing all of your old film. Um, anyway, I just thought I'd share that quickly. Uh, again, I'll put the links down below so you'll be able to scroll to this if you want to uh, a little bit later on. Um, next story with the Tamron. Um, the Tamron 28 to 75, uh, actually it's saying it's in stock. Um, Where's that though? Is that being H? I think, yeah, I think it's saying it's in stock. But uh, the thing with that is I noticed on the um, firmware, I've seen a number of people talking about that in the channels. I've also had people mention it to me that the firmware update definitely fixes the issues that that lens was having. So if you have got the lens and then you've updated the firmware and it's still faulty, uh, obviously you've got to send that back. But if you do have the lens and please apply that update because it seems to fix all of the problems that were out there. Now, if you were waiting on going and purchasing that lens, you could obviously now go out and buy that lens with confidence now because it clearly seems to me and everyone else that I've spoken to that all of those problems have now been fixed. Um, so if you wanted to uh, get a great lens, um, and I'll probably get that lens down the track when it's in stock, it's still way back ordered here in Australia. Uh, when it's in stock, it's not. I'm not in any rush because wedding season doesn't start for me for another couple of months. Um, but I, I may get it for that, and then I'll be sticking it on the gimbal, and it'll be a great uh, lens that I'll be able to do fusion and things like that as I do so much. Uh, the other thing too is I love the macro, almost macro that that will give me to shoot things like the flowers, uh, the wedding rings, and things like that. So I probably will get it. And I was so happy with that lens when I actually uh, got that evaluation copy and did the reviews for you. Uh, so I certainly wouldn't hesitate it. I noticed Michael has said the firmware fixed his issues as well. So it definitely seems to be that it has fixed all the issues. I noticed Max Yurov also said that he would recommend getting that over the, the 2470 and I also would as well to be honest. Um, I think if you're just coming into it now, I'd probably buy that before I buy the G Master lens. Um, they were pretty similar in quality, very similar. But the thing is, the amount that you're saving, you can then go out and buy another uh, lens with the money you're actually saving on that because this is so much cheaper. Uh, you can go out and buy a beautiful wide prime if you wanted to have something that goes over the 28mm. You could also go out and buy um, you know, a 135 if you wanted to or something like that. Um, I mean, really, it's amazing when you think what you're getting in that lens. The things that I love about it, with the weight particularly, like I've said to you before, uh, I don't want to lug around heavy gear really anymore. But then I'm looking at the, the Sigma 105. That's <laughs> a bit contradictory. Um, but for my lenses, like I'm doing like this, where I will be doing fusion and carrying two cameras around or whatever, having that, Tamron 28 to 75 would really make my life a lot easier. Um, so yeah, anyway, I just thought I'd talk to you about that. It all seems to be fixed. 
Um, next story. Um, this is one that interests me. I'd like to try this lens out when it's native. It looks like it's going to start shipping uh, in on July the 18th. So it's not far away. Uh, not far away at all. I'm still hoping to eventually, like I said, I've spoken to the Sigma reps here and I hope that that still works through. I've not heard anything back though, but um, they said they were really keen. Now I'm hoping that I'm gonna be able to review these in the future for you. Uh, I'd love to try the Sigma 135 against the 105 um, and I'm dying to try that. Um, I think, to be honest, I always say to be honest too, someone said that. I would prefer, the, the Sigma 85 mil is crazy big. I mean, it is really big. Now, if you don't mind that size, it's not an issue. I think I'd pre probably prefer to go for the one, if I was gonna lug that big lens around, the, the 85, I think I would prefer to go with the 105 or the 135 over that massive um, Sigma 85 mil. I mean, the beauty, I haven't got it here, it's in the other room. Uh, the beauty with the Battis and the Sigma and these um, Sony 85 1.8 is the fact that those lenses are so small. So that's a real benefit if you do want to have the mirrorless option of having these small sizes, uh, being portable and everything else. Uh, the second that you put on there, um, the Sigma uh, 85 particularly, that is a massive lens. And in fact, it looks almost <laughs> similar in size to the, uh, to the uh, 105. I mean, there's not a massive difference. It's wider, yes, but it, it's not bigger as an actual lens looks. So I think I would prefer to go for the 105 over the 85 if I was buying the Sigma because I think it would be a, a better portrait lens. Uh, having that 105 uh, mil focal length at 1.4 would be outstanding. I think, you know, the Bokka and everything would be just gorgeous, but I'm still waiting to try that out. But anyway, hopefully they'll all be released soon and we'll be able to actually try them. Um, anyway, so this one, the Sigma 135, which is a gorgeous focal length for portraits, um, is going to, they saying, start shipping on July the 18th. So what's that, only a week, less than a week away? Yeah, five days away or so. Um, so exciting times. Like I said, there's no longer can you anyone say that Sony haven't got enough lenses. We're really covered for everything now, and it really is a fantastic time to be shooting Sony. Uh, particularly with all the lenses now that are available to us. There's more than ample for nearly every photographer, <coughs> unless you're, you know, you really want to shoot wildlife where you need a, you know, an 800 mil or a 600 mil. Next story, I will be coming back to questions too. Now for the European um, viewers out there, I noticed that Alpha Universe has just started a European site for you guys. These are really good because Alpha Universe obviously lists the ambassadors for your area. Um, I'll just see if I can bring that down. Yeah, they, they actually have the ambassadors for your area. Um, it also has stories, events, competitions, sign up. like, And they'll be doing uh, stories directly related for the Europeans. Like I know America has one. Um, and you've got this for... Europe that's just been announced as well. So you, if you go to the site uh, sony.co.uk, and I'll put this link down below as well. Um, if you go to there, you can actually sign up and then you'll get newsletters and things like that. And they're gonna give you, you know, like training and stories. Uh, the Sony ambassadors are gonna be shooting for you and doing different things. And it will be, it'll be relating to you guys more from Europe than the US version would be. Um, so it's just another positive thing that's showing you that just like Sony's Pro Support, uh, they're also expanding things like this Sony Alpha Universe as well, which is a great thing. Hopefully we'll get one down under uh, as well, um, now that they've sort of set that up. But again, just a fantastic thing. You can click on the, um, you can also go to support from here as well. Um, if you go into ambassadors, you can check out what ambassadors are available for your area. Um, you know, and you'll see these are all the Sony European ambassadors. But again, just a great thing. You, know, you can see the countries where they come from. Um, but let me know what you think about that. I just think it's another positive thing that Sony are growing uh, and they're adding more and more people in here and, and they're directly relating to what you guys from Europe would uh, want to use. So next story. Um, I noticed that Sony have released the update. I, I haven't done the update firmware yet 
because I didn't have any issues with the previous firmware. I will update it, I suppose. Um, but there is a new version that stops those little bugs that were showing up uh, in the FN menu of the Sony A9. Um, let me know whether anyone has seen any difference. Um, let me know, Michael, whether you did it, because I know you were seeing some issues, weren't you, Michael, with the, um, with the Sony A9, the other firmware, you had problems starting to show up. Did you upgrade? Uh, to it and has that gone away uh, the only thing that bothers me is that it says that you one of the implications may be that it changes your fn buttons uh, that are there to probably back to their default uh, i'm not sure whether that happens so if anyone has updated their a9 let me know whether that happened to you but yeah that's a pain if it does that because i'll have to re remember what i've already got in there um, but yeah let me know anyway but it is available now it took him a, a little bit to get that fixed, actually. But anyway, that's the latest version that's out there. Um, next story. I've had a lot of people ask me about this. Um, the Battis that's coming out. It is a beautiful looking lens. Um, it's the 40 mil. I'd love a discussion about this too in the live chat, whether you think this is a good focal length. Do you think this is a good focal length? Um, I'm, I, like you know, I love the 35 mil focal length. So... This is a little bit tight for me in that respect. Uh, I'd prefer to have 35 than 40. Um, if you look at down here, the lens is very similar um, to the Battis, the other Battis lenses, except for there now is this button that helps you focusing, obviously. Uh, it will make it focus quicker. Um, it's a lovely looking lens like usual. I mean, it does look beautiful. The only thing is I just... I'm a little bit disappointed how big it is for an f2 lens. Are you surprised in how big that is for an f2 lens? I was thinking when I first heard this was going to be released, I expected that to be smaller than what it actually is. Uh, let me know what you think about that. But being bad as it probably is quite light because my 85 is very light. Um, but it, it is a bit bigger than what I actually thought it would be. Um, it's probably not a lens though that I would purchase, but let me know in the chat whether that's something that you really like. I know Oreo um, wants to get it. Oreo has a few baddest lenses, I think, and he adores them. Uh, I do as well. They're beautiful lenses. I just don't know if I'd like the th the 40 mil focal length, and I'm not also certain that f2 is wide enough for what I would like to shoot at. I really do like to shoot at 1.4 and 1.8. Uh, this is only goes to f2, so that's another issue as well that I think I probably wouldn't be happy with. Uh, but let me know in the chat anyway, because I'd be curious to know. Um, an interesting article that probably relates to the new release of the full frame mirrorless for Nikon is that they have discontinued um, their uh, Nikon One line. Um, and that probably is directly related to Nikon releasing their full frame mirrorless soon or announcing it soon. Um, so I, I discussed this the other day and it's, it's quite interesting that, um, a number of people I've seen in the chat and even on my video, uh, started to bag Nikon and they started to bag so uh, uh, Canon and everything else. And I really wish to be totally honest that people wouldn't be like that, uh, with camera gear, because at the end of the day, um, we want competition, and I, and I seriously hope that these uh, cameras are amazing, and I really mean that, because if these cameras are amazing, you can just imagine what Sony are going to have to give us. Um, so that's one thing that these people should be thinking about. When you have a number of people saying, uh, Nikon are not going to do any good with this, they've got no hope, you know, their focus is going to be terrible, you have to give them the benefit of the doubt until we actually see it. They may do an actually good job. If they base this off their D850, for instance, it's going to be quite a good camera, a really good camera. Uh, there are things that they have to change, yes, for the video side of things, but hopefully those things will be addressed in this or, or in the next camera that comes out. But remember, even though I shoot Sony, I really want Sony to be trying the hardest to keep my business. And the only way that's going to happen is if Nikon and Canon produce something amazing because then Sony are going to have to work harder. And that has to be a benefit to all of us. Uh, it really does. And so when you're sort of thinking about that, try and get over this rubbish of bashing each other's brands. I know there's people out there that will bash Sony, but at the end of the day, that's their stupidity and then let them go. But 
Uh, I personally hope we all don't go down that track as well. Of, of If Nikon bring out something good, we have to say it's actually a good camera. Same as if Canon release something good, we have to say it's a good camera. There's so much negativity out there about gear, and, and the Canon shooters particularly are still doing it about Sony. And all you ever hear about is their color science, and that is just complete crap. There's nothing wrong with the Sony color science. Have a look at Kiara's video straight out of camera. Like, these people are nuff-nuffs, honestly. They've always got to have something to whinge about. And so I'm asking you guys that follow me not to fall for those sort of crappy, stupid arguments. Just do your work, show beautiful work, and just shut them up. Because, you know, it's, it's, it's just crap. All I do with people now that start arguing like that is show me your work, and they never do. They never, ever get back to me to show me their work because they never have any. Um, and honestly, to say can, uh, Sony has terrible color science or, or the color science is not good as Canon is complete rubbish. And I proved that when I shot the A9 against the 5D Mark IV. They were shot exactly at the same time. Uh, and, the, and actually, to be honest, I said be, to be honest again, uh, the Canon should have blitzed it because I used the uh, 70 to 200 f 2.8 and I used the f4 version on the Sony. But the colors were that close, you might have to move a slide or a fraction just to make those two colors identical. So the, don't just don't get involved in that sort of stuff because it really is rubbish. And like I said, that video I shot of Chiari yesterday had no correction in, straight out of camera on the standard profile. And you can't tell me Chiari's skin tones don't look lovely on that video. Um, and Ben said, nuff nuffs. Yes, they are nuff nuffs, Ben. Uh, and someone like you, Ben, will get an advantage if Nikon uh, produce a great mirrorless. And I really hope they do, because like I said to you, I want those companies to survive and I want them to do well. It's better for all of us. And this is what a lot of those people that whinge don't understand, that if these companies fail, we're going to be left with an A7 III for the next five years. And that's what would happen, because Sony would have no need to innovate. So you should be thankful that these companies innovate and then, you know, we'll get amazing cameras coming out. If, if they don't release anything, Sony won't release anything either. Yeah. <laughs> Angry photographer is on rant. I love it, Dragon. I know. I do fire up sometimes about things like that, but it, it does... Some of these stupid Canon people that go on about color science and stuff, they do my head in because it's, it's a complete load of crap. They used to do it about lenses, remember? They did it about that. Then they used to do it about only having one um, uh, card slot. They did it about that. that and every time they will dis they'll try and find something else. And now they've sort of tried to start going to uh, color science. And it's just not there. They, they just need to give up because that, it's not true anymore. Wait till the A7S III comes out and they will improve the color science even more. I can guarantee that's going to happen. That camera is going to be outstanding. I, I, I can guarantee it. It'll be amazing. The color science is amazing now, but I bet you it's even better with the A7S III. Anyway, stop the rant. So, you know, let's hope that Canon and Nikon do produce really good cameras. I'm, I'm hoping. Prices then will go down on Sony. Hopefully then the G Master lenses will drop down in prices. Um, and we're all going to win from it. So let's hope that that's what, you know, happens. I did do a talk about this and I wanted to just mention it in the live chat in case if you haven't seen it. Um, this AD Pro 400 that's coming out is quite exciting. Um, it seems to be a really nice unit. Um, if I know a lot of people use the AD 200. Now you might disagree with me, but I think the AD 200 is underpowered. If you're dealing with the way I shoot particularly and you're using large modifiers and you want to stand away from the subject, you need something that's a little bit stronger. So I think the AD400 may be the perfect balance between too, much, too big a, a flash. Does it mention the size down here? Yeah, there you go. Um, the AD400 may be the perfect mixture between being really light with the AD200 and then getting the AD600 Pro. Um, and I think it's a great balance. If I was buying from scratch now, I'd buy the AD400 Pro if I was worried about weight. I would though buy the 600 if that was me purchasing it. I would always go for the largest flash because remember the thing with flashes and I had uh, this, people keep going on about the video that I posted saying you can overpower the sun uh, with the AD200 uh, in 
high, you know, midday, you, you can't. There's no way you can overpower the sun in HSS with the AD200. If you wanted to say shoot a 70 to 200 at F8, and the reason why you may want to do that is to show the background. You don't always want to blur the background out. For instance, if you're using, if you're doing a wedding shot and you want to show the beautiful buildings that are in the background, therefore you, will, you won't open it all the way up. Um, I noticed when I went to Yervon's workshop the other day, he said he nearly always shoots weddings at f5.6. That's because he wants to show these beautiful locations uh, where he's actually shooting at. And that changed my thinking a little bit too, because I have been this real shooting wide open junkie for uh, how long I can remember. But it has changed my thinking that in the next wedding I do, I might try and think about that when I've got nice buildings and stuff in the background to not shoot so wide open to show those backgrounds that are there. Now, if you had something like the AD200, you can't say shoot at 5.6 in midday sun. Uh, if you say shooting a 70 to 200, you need a minimum of uh, really probably 200th of a second to get perfect stability. Now, it's, you can go under that, but you, you, can you can affect sharpness. So if you've got an AD200, you have to get that close to the subject if you're shooting like that. You can use NDs to try and change things, but it's not going to fix it. There's not enough power there. You need something like a 600. Uh, the 400 will be a reasonable balance in between. So if it was me purchasing now, I'd get the 600. But if you don't want to carry around that weight... Um, I'd have the 400 and then you've always got the ability to turn the power down if you need it or turn it up if you need it. Um, but it looks like a, a really nice light, uh, nice controls if you look uh, through here. The design seems to be really nice. Um, nice little handle too that we, you, you've got there. Um, and it looks like it's very well made uh, as well. And you've got these beautiful attachments that obviously are going to come out as well. This is sort of very pro photo -y, which is what I like about these, the way that they seem to attach looks very pro photo -y in the fact that you can put grids on and then have color gels uh, there as well. Um, but I think it looks like a really nice flash. Uh, you're getting around 300 shots, I think, at full power. And like I've said to you, if you're dealing with a 400 power unit, you're probably often only going to be shooting that less than half power. So you're going to get a thousand images or whatever. Uh, that with an extra battery probably will do you for the full day. Um, but seems like a really nice light. If, if I didn't have my pro photo units, I'd definitely be looking at, at these lights. They seem to be really nice and I like the design. Uh, Godox do now tend to be producing really good lighting. Um, internal battery seems to recycle very fast. Um, and the TTL is also works uh, pretty well on them. Uh, and the transmitters also seem to be really good. Uh, they're 2.4 uh, gigahertz wireless system, so seem to be really nice. Someone just asked if I taught at Monash. No, I taught at RMIT, Carl, uh, which is another big university here in Australia. Um, and that's, I think, it for uh, all of those news for today. So let's open it up to questions. Um, so you can fire your questions away. So let me go back and um, see what's happening. Um, most people are just saying hi. Um, Ponoya said up there that uh, he's just come back from Bali and used the Tamron 28 to 75 exclusively for the A7R3 uh, for his vlogs, and it's a fantastic lens. So he's really happy with that um, with that lens. Um, Ponoya said, "I haven't upgraded the firmware to the latest." Oh, there you go. He's so he, he obviously has the lens like I had that had no issue with the AF in the first place. I'd still upgrade the firmware though when you can. The good part about the Tamron is it upgrades through the camera like your Sony firmware does, so it's a very easy thing to fix. Um, <laughs> Rui's talking about how he's had a lot of those things taken off and it does hurt. That's I've had sunspots burnt um, on my face, stuck on my head up there too, and everywhere around here I think. There's one on that side as well. Um, had dry ice gun blown on me this morning. It did hurt. 
Um, it's just pre-cancer checking, you know. They're not cancerous, but they burn them off before they could turn cancerous. If anyone's wondering what these spots are on my face. Um, just people saying hello. Michael's in here. Steve Waitcraft is here. I'm De Brown's in here. Thanks so much, Chris, too, for that donation. Really appreciate that, mate. Oh, there's Tony giving me a donation. Tony, I love it. Get better sunscreen. <laughs> I need you teaching me for many more years. Well, that's why I've got these things burn off. Oh, you know what? The thing is, um, Tony, I'll tell you that, that the actual doctor, a skin specialist, said to me this morning, do, do you wear a hat? And I do. I always go out wearing the hat. The problem is that I've, I'm very, very fair. And this is burnt from when I was a child. And, and that's the issue now. So now I'm suffering from all this from when I'm a child. I did have one cancer cut out on this, this side, actually, just up here. Uh, but it wasn't melanoma. It was a carcinoma or something, squamous cell carcinoma. So I did have that cut out. As long as you get them early, um, you're okay. So I'm very conscious of it. Uh, and I really am conscious because... Uh, the thing why I'm a bit paranoid too is my mother died from melanoma. She got one on her leg when she was 48 and she died. So I'm very conscious of getting it done. Um, so thank you so much. So I'm intending to be here a long time. Tony, <laughs> I will buy some more sunscreen um, from that. I love it. Cracks me up. Uh, thank you so much, Chris, too, for that as well. He's saying buy a, a, a few Coronas. Uh, really appreciate that as well. Um, Pinoy said, yeah, negative people are a waste of time and energy. I know, get positive. Like, just get out there and start shooting. Um, they are. They, they're just crazy. Uh, Gerald's here. Oh, I was showing your work, Gerald, um, just before. Um, some of your macro work. Um, Gerald said, we do care about you. You are our leader and our inspiration. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, you guys crack me up. I care about you guys too. Trust me. Um, Jean said, hi, David. Hands are sore from installing the MagMod. Mad grip to my Godex. Was it hard, was it, to install it, Gene? Uh, I haven't got any of those. Um, I do think, too, you have to be very careful. Um, and I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about this because I think it's important. Um, I've noticed a lot of people are starting to go to these um, MagMod type things on their, on their um, and I hope I'm not putting you down for what you, you're actually doing here, but... You will never ever beat a modifier that is nice and big and soft. And this is one of the things that you, you have to learn. Sometimes it's better to carry around more heavier gear than it is to carry around more simple stuff. And I've seen a lot of this happen, particularly with the AD200. And I don't mean to be criticizing people, but it doesn't give the nicest type of soft light when you're dealing with strobe work. And this is the thing that I've been noticing quite a bit lately of people sort of getting onto this uh, Mad Mog type adapters and all this sort of stuff. Just be careful. Remember, the larger your light source is and the closer you can get to your subject with that larger light source, the softer and more beautiful uh, the image will look. And this is why the sun and, and coming through a window or whatever is always so nice and gorgeous because you've got this massive sun and it gives you a really soft... Uh, look about it, you know, and, and things like that. Like, And if you have like my seven foot octa like I've got in the studio, if you get that very close to the subject, it becomes very, very soft. I very rarely ever use my pro photo lights without, diffuser, without some sort of diffuser on them because immediately when you do that, you're going to get a very harsh light and you can tell it's been flashed. And this is the thing that you want to try and avoid if you can. And I've noticed a few people posting them uh, and... To be honest, I, I'm not convinced that I really like the look of it. Now, I'm sorry, Gene, if you've bought that and you think I'm having a go at you about that. I'm not. But I'm just saying just be careful about doing that. And I really think to be, I'm going to say to be honest again because I say it that many times, um, you're better off to have something like a two-foot octa or a two-foot um, uh, uh, box, you know, that you can actually modify, that you can actually use. And it will give you much, much softer light. Sometimes I'll use the attachments, and I'll show you what I mean. Sometimes I'll use these, like this, on the light. 
Now these are massive, they'll spread the light like crazy, but you still get a really hard light with this because there's no diffusion in. You can actually buy, I think, a, you can actually buy grids and stuff and a diffusion sock to go over this, but this gives you a really nice hard type light uh, when you're dealing with it to get with these on. But when you're dealing with the, the small modifiers, like when they just put the globes on and, uh, over the top of the flashes and these magmogs and things, just be careful about doing uh, portraits with those type of lights because you're never ever going to get the soft look like if you're using a uh, you know a beautiful modifier uh, so just be careful now they have their uses yes if you want to travel very light but just be careful about how much you use it so I'm not trying to put you off that gene but just be careful about how you use it if you want your work to be really gorgeous soft lighting is the trick and I think that is the real trick about getting beautiful work is to have people not sure you've used a strobe in that, and that, that's really important. Um, anyway, I thought I'd do that, uh, talk to you about that. Um, and just be careful, because if people try and start selling all these sort of things, and they're, you know, people will sell anything if they're going to get a dollar out of something. So don't always believe what people are telling you. Uh, you really should look at how them, them I'm not, I'm, look, I'm not saying I'm a master at all, but you should look at masters of photography and how lighting was done. And if you look at some of the most beautiful work is like window light, and that's because that's a massive, massive, basically like a soft box. That window is acting like a massive soft box, letting all of that light in very soft. So just think about things like that. If, you st if you're in a bright sunny day, and you then move into an area where the sun's reflecting off a, a white wall, you'll get beautiful soft light because that's acting like a massive reflector as well. If you're dealing with a modifier like on the AD200 and you're dealing with a light source that's this big, you're going to get very hard shadows and it will never look that attractive. Um, Sony beer drinking night. Yeah, I wish it was for me too. Um, God, Scott's here at 3.15 in Scotland. I'm off work back from a backpacking trip and can't sleep. Well, good to see you in here, Scott. Um, Casper sold all my G Master lens. You did not, Casper. <laughs> Tell the truth. Did you? Nah, no way would you have. Uh, Scott's, uh, come on, folks, hit the like button. Thanks so much, Scott, for saying that. Yeah, if you have, I'd, I'd love it if some more did. Um... Little Ray Blue said, I bought the A6500 book from uh, Bush. Really liked it. Okay, thanks for sharing that. Time to wait for the Nikon camera. Uh, hopefully, like I said, they'll do a really good job. Um, <laughs> Michael said, Casper, it's going to blow up in your hands. <laughs> Casper's staring and saying, Nikon, Nikon, Nikon. I love it. Um, Gerald said, um, Scott's, uh, we're in Scotland. Uh, he had great friends and love it there. Oh, okay, Gerald's talking to him. Um, Michael saying Sony, Sony, Sony. <laughs> they're, all, they're all doing this now because I've told people to behave and stop doing that. I love it. Um, Carl's in here saying hi. Uh, Michael said, wait, be back in a minute. My Sony is overheating. <laughs> you know what, Michael? I must do this, and I think I'm going to do it after this. I'm going to down re-download my Sony A9 overheating one because when I downloaded that, I didn't have that many subscribers. And I think I'm going to re-download it now because I have more subscribers that wouldn't have seen it. And just to sort of see the reaction that it gets out there. So I think I'll re-upload that. I think I'll download it, delete it off Facebook, uh, off YouTube and re-upload it. I might do that because it was quite, I enjoyed doing that one about the Sony A9 overheating. And I'll do that today. Um, Casper saying that, uh, that one, that camera one guy, Danny, he's saying because of the overheating, I love it. Um... Pinoy said, I will choose the RX 105 for vlogging purpose, a built-in ND and F1.8 is a no-brainer. Yeah, it is. It's really good if you're dealing with vlogging. Uh, I don't understand why they took that out. I'm not sure. Um, Peter said, what's your live stream setup? Now, my live stream setup today, Peter, is I'm using Wirecast. Um, and I'll show you what it is. Oops. Let me just open up a new window. Um, uh, where are we? Wirecast. cast? 
So it's Wirecast 9 that I'm actually using. Um, and it's actually, let me just see which one it is. I think it's, I'm using the Pro version, um, which is this one. It's not cheap. Um, I'm using that one, Wirecast Pro, which is 9.95 US. Uh, it's not cheap at all, but it's certainly a really amazing um, software. So that's what I'm using. Now I'm using Ultra Studio Mini recorders to um, get these and I'll show you these. Let me just see if I can find this for you. Magic. I'm using these um, these devices here. Where are we? I'll go back. Uh, I'm using this device to stream to. So that's the one. Now it's Firewire. And um, it's Firewire and Firewire out that side, USB out this side. Uh, you can use SDI if you want to use SDIs as well. So that's how my camera connects into Wirecast uh, by using that. And I'm using the A6500 as the camera to actually connect to me at the moment with the 24 uh, 1.8 lens uh, through there. Now the sound itself is coming from um, this little device over here. Oh, quality's terrible through that at the moment. Uh, the sound device I'm using the Zoom H6 um, and I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm using this uh, little device for, where are we? Um, I'm using that little device here for the sound, which is the Zoom H6. It's also a great recorder. And I'm using the Sennheiser mic above me to get, uh, which is a boom mic. Uh, which is into that uh, Zoom H6. So that's my setup. And the switcher that I'm using is this one. I just haven't got it connected today, but the switcher that I'm using is this. So this is the switcher that I use to control camera movement. I just haven't connected in today, but I usually do. So that's how I'm switching cameras. At the moment, I'm just doing it all manually. So that's, that's the setup that I'm using. So I hope that helped. Um, Casper said I might sell my 2470. I have the A mount 2470, which is a great lens. Yeah, I mean, if you sold that Casper, you could easily get the Tamron and another lens, you know, or you could, yeah, just keep that one if you wanted to. Uh, Richard's just saying hi. Michael said I ordered the RX 106, but when it came in, I told them to sell it to someone. What made you change your mind, Michael? Just curious. Why didn't you buy it? Was there a reason why you never kept it? Um, Chris Barr said, I can't um, stand my iPhone 8 plus photos. If it's not midday, full sun out, the IQ sucks in any low light. Okay. I don't mind them, actually, but yeah, they're not good in low light. That's why I, I, I like the RX 105. The second I'll go inside, I'll use that. Um, they, they do, I mean, the, the sensor size is so small on that camera that they do suck if you're, if you're dealing with low light particularly. Um, Gerald said, um, oh no, he's talking about something else. Oh, uh, the, what do, does that mean what do I think about the 218 MacBook Pro? Well, it seems like it's a really good unit. And I also noticed that, um, where did I see that this morning? There was a device that was actually uh, came out that you can connect to the 218 MacBook Pros that will help you with your video editing and stuff. I'm trying to think who made that device. Um, let me just Google. Let me just Google something, and I'll just see if I can find what that is. Um, external. I think it was external GPU. 
uh, was a new, ah, oh, here we go. I'll show you this, because this was really amazing. So this device down here, it's $600, but what it actually is, is it has, it's an external GPU that connects to your Mac Pro through your Firewire 3, um, but it has inside it, uh, it's actually got a Radeon Pro uh, 580 um, with an 85 watt charging uh, power, and now it's, Basically, so it's an external GPU and you've got all your attachments through here, but this connects to your MacBook Pro like that and that's what does the external processing and it gives you an amazing horsepower uh, directly from your MacBook Pro. So how cool is that? Um, and I believe it's about uh, $600. So you can see the size of the unit roughly uh, sitting through here. So you, yeah, you could also connect it probably to the new iMacs as well. Um, but that would make a massive difference uh, if you're dealing with horsepower. Now it comes, you get eight gigabytes of, let me just move this over, you get eight gigabytes of uh, GDDR5 RAM, uh, 256 memory and 36 discrete compute units and it gives you 5.5 teraflops of processing power um, and it can do 38.4 billion texture pixels per second. So this is one way that you could buy something like a MacBook Pro and attach this just at home. So if you were doing your video editing or whatever you're doing at home, you've got that ability of attaching an external GPU to it. So it's great. Now the overall thing with those new uh, Macs, they seem really nice. Um, but I think the highest spec one was about 6,000 US. They're very expensive. I've got MacBook Pros. I think mine's the 214 version though. Uh, I use in the house. I'm using a Mac. I, uh, Mac Pro here. Um, I may get one eventually, but there's nothing wrong with the ones I've got. But clearly, I think they're saying they're about 70% faster than the 215 MacBook Pro. So they must be quite good. So that's, yeah, just released today, I believe. Um, I wasn't showing, was I showing that then? I don't know whether I even showed it. Did I show the, I don't know if I did. Did I just mention in the chat? I'm not sure whether I showed it. I think I was on me. Uh, let me just come here. Just in case if I didn't show it, I'm just going to pull it back up again. Uh, history. Uh, where are we? That is the device. Did I show it on the thing? I'm not sure. That's the unit there. Um, there are the ports at the back. Um, and that's how it actually attaches to the... Uh, computer, so you sort of see the size that it actually is. I wasn't sure if I actually switched it over, I may not have. I was so excited about looking at that. Um, anyway, that will let you look at that, just in case if I missed it. Okay, um, what else? Uh, let me come back to here. Um, lower uh, you, uh, ultra wide angle lenses are fantastic, so thanks for. Um, Saying that, um, Pinoil said the 218 uh, MacBook Pro is out now, uh, 19 with uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, interested in the 15 millimeter f2.0 uh, lens, yep. Um, I wouldn't mind, I think there's a 12 version of that too, isn't there? That's the one I'd probably like to look at as well, Scott's. That I'd love that one. Um, typewriter said, nice, I'm trying to figure out whether to get the 13 or the 15 inch. I'll get the 15 if that was me. Uh, just because I like the real estate, uh, especially if you're dealing with live video editing and stuff, it's you need the real estate. And Dragon's just popped in, so nice to see you here. Um, Casper said, nothing is sharper than the Sony 90. Yes, that is a very sharp lens. Uh, G'day, Ben. Good to see you in here. Um, BSB Films saying hi. Chris is saying, I see my photo on the Facebook page. Sony A7 III shot with a vintage Canon. Yep. Um, oh, there you go. Michael is saying the firmware fixed his issues with the uh, 28 to 75. So now that, that's perfect for Michael, which is fantastic. Um, Dragon said, owning the Sony Cell 24105F4, is it worth buying the Tamron 28 to 70? No, probably not. Uh, I don't think you need both of those lenses. I, I would always just get one or the other. Uh, unless you need the 2.8 aperture. That that could be the telling factor. 
Um, or you wanted to say put it onto a, a gimbal and run at 2.8 and have that close focusing, then you could say yes. But I'd honest, I'm going to say honestly again, I'd buy a Prime or something like that rather than getting the 28 to 75 if you already own the 24 to 105. That's a great lens. That's a really good lens. Um, he also owns the uh, 90 mil macro. Okay. Um, Little Blue says, Little Red Blue says, the Tamron sits on my A7 III. I've never had an issue with it. The 70 macro gives me gas. Yeah, I know. It seems to be really good. Gerald said, um, yes, that Sigma Art 70 2.8 macro delivers stunning images, sharp clarity, top IQ, lightweight, and easy focus, both manual and autofocus. Uh, and he said it's affordable. Um, Michael said, the Tamron is different and much more diverse than the Sony 2470 GM. I'm selling my GM. Yeah, I remember you spoke about that, Michael. And I'd do the same thing. If I had the GM, I would do exactly the same thing. I'd be selling the GM and um, buying another lens. Um, because I do honestly believe, honestly, I should count the number of times I do that. The, um, the Tamron is not quite as sharp over the whole thing, but center, the Tamron's sharper. And if you look at Max Eurov's video about that, that confirms that. Um, yes, there's a little bit of venetting at the end, and like I said, unless you're gonna shoot brick walls and stuff, you're not gonna notice it. Um, and it really is beautiful all over. Very sharp, incredibly sharp, quick focus. The macro side to that lens is amazing. And I quite like the fact that it goes to 75 because you're also that close to getting you know, near 80, which is a beautiful focal length for portraits. So, yeah, I'd be doing the same thing, Michael. I'd be selling the 24 uh, to 70 as well. Way heavier. The, the uh, Tamron's really light. Um, Scott said, thanks, David. I took your advice about using a longer focal length for landscapes. I've been using the 18 to 105 and the 70 to 300, and I think my video footage has improved. I know, how much different is it when you shoot landscapes and you use longer lenses? It's beautiful because if you're seeing mountains and things like that, you actually see the scale of these objects instead of them being flat and all tiny. It's beautiful to have that compression. And I really think people don't um, use longer lenses enough for when they're dealing with landscapes. They forget about it and it really would change their whole outlook on, and you know on photos what they're actually getting. Um, Gerald said David doesn't own the 24105, but he has been hearing for us how good uh, hearing from us how good it is. Yep. Unless you need the 2.8, I wouldn't think you need both. Yep, you don't. Uh, like I said, unless you were going indoors and you need 2.8, yes, then you could say uh, it. Um, Michael said no. Remember, I was joking. Nothing is wrong with the A9 firmware on my end. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. You were joking, weren't you? Um, Casper said selling my A9X, I'd, I wouldn't sell my A9, it's my favourite camera I've got. I don't think Casper's serious. Michael said, Casper, you will sell your wife before you sell your A9. <laughs> I've got to go back to this, I haven't been showing it. Um, yeah, Casper's saying here that he'd sell his wife before he um, would sell his A9, I love it. Um, Dragon said, um, thanks for your advice. My 24105 is sharp and feels like a GM, but with a lower aperture. There's nothing wrong with f4 if you, if you don't need the 2.8. And I, like I said, I shoot with a 70 to 200 f4 all the time and love it. Um, Kev said, wow, I caught you live from Halifax, NZ, Canada. It's great to see you actually on here, Kev. Um, BMB Film said, Nick on 4K 60 frames per second, laugh out loud. Ben said, Nuff Nuffs, that's because I mentioned Nuff Nuffs. <laughs> I'm probably going to cop some comments about that now. Um, Anger Photographer ramp because I was going crook. Casper um, said, David, my A9 went back to normal. Okay, so the uh, firmware fixed it. Uh, Little Ray Blue said, the colour science for Sony with their new cameras is great. Don't worry about it like as much as I used to. Yeah, it is. It's, it's fantastic. Um... Kev said, the Sony looks awesome out of camera. I shot Canon for six years uh, professionally. The a7 III convinced me to switch and I would not go back. Yeah, I agree. Ben said, looking forward to it. If Nikon, Canon release a great product, everybody wins in the long run. And I agree totally, Ben. They do. Uh, Scott said, uh, competition is good. A uh, good one. Uh, one option is no option. That's exactly right. Let's hope Canon and Nikon do well. I really do hope they do well. 
Michael said, those kinds of people make me so mad it's making my A9 overheat again. And I'm going to post that A9 overheating video up again shortly, just in case if people haven't watched it. Um, what else have we got? Um, Kev said, even if they released an A7 III with a Canon EF mount with Canon written on it, I wouldn't switch back. Um, Michael said, yeah, the 8400 looks nice. Yes, it does. I agree, Michael. It does look very nice. Um, Kev said, David, I love the AD600 with the extender head. It's the perfect setup for me. Casper said, uh, you bag my G-Laster lenses all the time. <laughs> I've given Casper a complex. Uh, no, they're good lenses, Casper. They're just not for me. They're too heavy. Carl said, did you teach at, at Monash? No, I taught at RMIT, Carl. I taught there for 20 odd years. I, I was a lecturer there. Uh, Carl said, do you think the 400 watts AD Pro will be powerful enough to use in bright sunlight? Borderline, Carl. Um, often I'll be using my three uh, pro photo lights in the sun if I really want to overpower the sun. Uh, I don't use three much, but I do use two quite often and they're 500 watt units. So then I'm, you know, throwing both of them at them. Um, so if it was really sunny, uh, the AD400 would not be powerful enough unless you were very close. Um, if you want to get back a little bit, you need something a bit more powerful. But at least you're going to have more power on the AD400 than the 200. Uh, so it's possible with the AD400. Uh, Michael said that strobe seemed to f uh, be a mixture of pro photo and the, w the way the bulb is sticking out in the bronze colour. Yeah, it does. They, they do seem to be copying them, don't they? Um, Ben's talking about the mag mods, I think. Uh, Gerald said, what is your advice to Nikon and Canon users that may be on the fence about switching to Sony? Should they wait for Nikon and Canon full frame mirrorless or go ahead and go to Sony now? My advice honestly would be to wait. Um, it's that close to being announcements at Photokina. Now I know they're not going to be a, a released yet, but why would you jump at the moment? Just wait to see what those cameras uh, have in their specs and then make a decision on it. So it probably would be a good thing at the moment to just wait and see uh, what happens. Then obviously if, if they don't release anything that's good enough, uh, then you could switch over to Sony. But I certainly would be at this stage recommend everyone wait. Because uh, it's that it's not far off, unless you're in a desperate need to move now. But if you're not, I would hang out at this stage. Um, Ben said, Magmon stuff is still a hard light, and it is, and this is the problem. This is what I'm trying to say to people. Uh, I only use it on camera when bouncing off the roof, so it adds a little bit of fill. Looks terrible as direct flash, and I've noticed this is sort of becoming a bit common again because I think this Magmon stuff's becoming trendy. Um, but guys, if you want your work to be gorgeous and to have people hiring you and things like that, don't get suckered into using these small flashes. You should be using uh, bigger modifiers. Trust me, you will thank me because the image will look completely different. Um, good for run and gun stuff, but that's about it. Um, Michael said, Magmod just announced a softbox uh, they're coming out with. It looks like it might be nice, uh, but what do I know? Yeah, I did see that. Um, I did see that, yes. But again, the, the issue is with that, I think the Madmog was designed, I, th I might work with the AD200s, but they were showing it with a normal flash head in there, and there's no way that's going to be enough light unless you're dealing in a, you know, like a, an evening or something like that. Uh, so you need more power. Like you'd want to be using an AD400 if you're dealing with a softbox, Michael. As you know, you've got Broncolor. Um, because you need the power. Because the second you put something inside those soft boxes with the fuses and everything on there, you're losing massive amounts of power. So you do need something that's quite big to get around that. Um, Gene said, it took me over an hour installing the base um, mod, mag mod configuration. Love hearing your thoughts. Reason why I'm trying so hard to use the smaller modifiers is because I'm trying hard to carry less stuff. Yeah, and Gene, this this is the thing. If you're if you're shooting portraits, you've got to get out of that thinking. Um, particularly if you want your work to look beautiful. The second you start to try and use things like mag mods and 
mag mod and stuff like that. Any of the small things like Sony flashes, uh, any of your speed lights, without the modifiers, it's going to look like a flash look. And that's what you want to get away from. You want your image to look like it fits in with the environment without having that real high flash look. And that's the secret to having something look beautiful. Um, and just be careful. I'm not saying don't use it, but I'm saying if you're doing portraiture, you definitely can't beat large soft modifiers. Um, I am DeBrown said, seen one ad for a softbox with a mad mod attachment. Yeah, but again, Tony, it, the, the issue is if the light's not big enough, they're not going to be strong enough. That, that's the problem. And again, this is why I can always talk to you this way, guys, because I'm not sponsored by anyone. I'm just going to tell you the truth as a photographer for what I shoot, which is mostly portraits. Uh, these little light attachments are not going to help your work to really look amazing. You need larger modifiers to get really beautiful work. There's a reason why they use massive scrims. There's a, real, there's a reason why if you're dealing with movies that they use these massive scrims with lights coming into these scrims to soften those lights up. They're not using tiny lights unless they want this old Hollywood type look. If you look at the way movies lit up and stuff, they're always coming through these massive scrims to soften that light up. There's reasons why they do that. Um, don't get suckered in by marketing. Uh, Bosn said, purchased the a7 III yesterday as a second camera with my a7R3. The focus on it is amazing, even compared to my a7R3. Yeah, the a7 III is definitely a step up. It's definitely a step up from the a7R3, and, it's, and the a9 is even a little bit of a step up again. Mike said, a funny story, last month I sold my A6500 in anticipation of the A6700, which I guess will be announced at Photokina, where I'll be, of course. Uh, got 950 euro, now the, the grey one sells for 850. Well, how well did you do, Mike? Um, CG saying hi. Um, so currently use my A6000 to accompany my A7 III, and the A6000 is still okay. Um, I hope the A6700 will use a Z battery. So do I, actually. Michael said, I changed my mind about the RX106 because I have too many cameras. Oh, okay. Just waiting until the A7S3 comes out before I buy another camera. And that's a really good move, Michael. Uh, Kelly said, what camera profiles are you using in Lightroom for stills? Uh, everything from Sony comes in dark uh, yellow or brown. I'm just using the standard profile. This is what I don't understand. I can't understand why people are having so many issues that I might just be lucky. I don't know, Kelly. Uh, I don't change anything with the profiles at all. Sometimes I'll go in and change it to the, the Sony profiles and, and go to standard. That can also uh, make it a little bit warmer. But my images are not um, brownish or, or dark yellow when they come in. Uh, are you exposing correctly? Um, I'm just curious. The other thing too is don't forget too, you might be better off to get a, a grey balance card and balance to that, like I do. Um, you know, you may be better off to do that. Um, Mick is just saying I, I was shown, I'm not sure what that means. But yeah, I just use standard, that's all. The standard Sony profile. Um, Rui said, yes, it did show up. Uh, show, oh, okay. Um, Gene said, that GPU will make my... 13-inch MacBook Pro, which doesn't have a dedicated graphic card, quite attractive. I know it's a great system, that gene. Really nice. Um, and asked, you said, the Gigabyte Gaming Box uh, 588G graphics card GPU is also nice. Thanks for sharing that. Gene said, waiting on the 218 MacBooks to show up on the Apple website, refurb section to get a sizable discount. Uh, Dragon says, I have both the 55 and the 85 1.8 primes. Beautiful. I love both of those lenses. Uh, and Dragon said, the 35 f 2.82. I love that 35 2.8. That's so sharp, that 35 2.8. It's a great lens. And tiny. Look at the size of it. I mean, look at the size of that lens. It's ridiculous. It's beautiful. I adore it. Fantastic. And they, then you've got that lovely little sun cover, you know, the shade that goes over it. Because... Um, Stops any um, light from getting in. You know, fantastic. So you can fit a different ND on that size if you have that size, or you can use the 49mm there, the same one I'm using on my 55. I love it. Fast focus, it's just beautiful. 
God, we got, we've been going 19, uh, one hour, 19 minutes. I've uh, gone ridiculous length again. Um, what else have we got there? Mike said, sometimes I shoot landscapes with a 100 to 400. Exactly, Mike. It's fantastic. Gives a unique perspective due to the compression, and that's what I love about it. Chris said, I just bought the A9 for 3000 off eBay. Perfect condition. Wow, that's fantastic, Chris. Great buy. Uh, Mark said, just came out of a fashion shoot with the Zeiss 51.4. I'm going to weld, weld it to my, onto my A7 III. Yeah, that's a great lens, that Mark. Uh, beautiful. Very, very sharp, that lens, the 51.4. Very sharp. Gene said, uh, people that complain about color science are the same people that complain about the menu system. I know. They're just used to the Canon or other brands. Uh, Stacy said, just showed up, uh, so this may have been answered. Love my TAM on 28 to 75. Has anyone upgraded the firmware to fix the focusing problems? Yes, they did. Stacy say they did it and it worked. And I've, I talked about that, that it, uh, a lot of people are saying it's fixed all of their issues that they had out there. B. Rich said, do you feel the Tamron 28 uh, is cheap? I do. Do you mean, does it feel cheap? Well, no, I don't really. I think it's a great lens for that money. Um, it's cheaper feeling quality than the G Master, obviously, but you're only paying $7.99. It, it's a bargain, B. Rich. Honestly, that is a fantastic lens. Scott said, um, I got the exact same three lenses. Casper uh, said, just got smacked. Thanks, guys. I don't know what that means, Casper. Um, Kevin said, hi, David from the California desert. I've made the switch to the a7 III. Can't wait to get it into my hands. You're going to love it, Kevin. It's just an amazing camera. Um, Gerald said, did you see the post on your Facebook group where eight different third-party Z batteries were compared? No, I haven't read that yet, Gerald. I'll have to have a look. Um, Ron said, I know you already mentioned it, but what lens do you use for those macro detail shots? Uh, the Sony 35. Uh, Sony 30mm 3.5 is the one I use. That's that's the one I use all the time and love it. Um, I don't know if it's... I don't think my bags are in the back. I'll just check. That one. So this is the one that I use, and I love this. I showed, the last wedding that I did, I showed this was used for the macro shots of the rings and flowers. So if you go through the wedding walkthrough, you'll see me uh, these images that I actually use this lens. So this is the, uh, three point, the 30 3.5 macro. Now it's an APS-C lens, but if I put this on my A7R2, I get an 18 megapixel file size, which is fantastic. Look. And I can even use this on the A7 III. You get about a 11 megapixel file size, but remember, no one ever blows their images up ridiculously big with a ring shot. They just don't ever do it. So an eight, a, an 11 megapixel file size is ample for what I would be shooting with macro. So that's what I use, and I love it because it's so tiny. If I want to, I can also put it on my A6500 and use that for the macro shots, or the A6300 and use it for the macro shots. But great, and I use it on the full frame all the time in super 35 mil mode. Fantastic. So that's what I use for that. Um, hey David, do you use cages or rigs? No, I don't. I have, I, I have got cages, Michael, and I do have small rig. I've got, um, I can't even remember, I put videos about them up ages ago. I have small rig for the A7R2, and I've also got small rig cages for my A6500 and the A6300 but I never use them anymore. Uh, I just like to travel light with everything now, Michael, so I just don't use them. They're, they're in the uh, cupboards there. I don't think I'll sell them, but I never use them anymore, but I have got them, yes, and I've got ones with the full handles, uh, the whole works, but I tried it, and then I thought, why am I doing this? You know, like, I just want to travel light and really minimalistic, and putting the cage on, the second I did that, they didn't feel as nice in my hand. They became more cumbersome, um, and so I don't use them anymore. But yes, I have got them. Um, Mark said, Godox and Jimbai, etc. have umbrella-type pop-up softboxes which are easier to transport. Yeah, and that's a good idea, Mark. The Godox, I use the 80-centimeter Octabox, and then Jimbai is a beauty dish. Perfect. 
And, and this is what I'm saying to encourage you guys that are following me. Yes, you can't travel as light, but you'll get a much better result. Uh, having something like what Mark just said there with the umbrella type soft boxes. And remember, I showed you the shoot through umbrellas. You know, look, use this. If you want to travel light, use these. I mean, this is better than using a little mag mod because at least you're dealing with now light being that big. And just hold the flash so it's basically, you know, sort of down here somewhere against the actual unit. Hold the flash basically like that and then that will become the whole softbox. Now, people have moved away from this, and I don't understand why. Because this is way better than anything you'll ever use with a mag mod. Way better. And, and it's just this big. The, the thing I'm saying to you guys is don't get suckered in by marketing and, and seeing this stuff which is all new and think it's fantastic. You're better off, way better off to go this way than use something like a mag mod. Way better. This is going to be so much softer. The only thing is, you just can't control spill with this, and that's why I don't use it that much. I prefer to have a softbox which has a grid on it, or, uh, you know, it's not going to allow light to spill sideways. But if I was going to travel light, this is the way I'll always go. I'll always just take an umbrella. Uh, Ron just said, thank you. Gerald said the review uh, picker picked the DSTZ E battery at $22. Wow, interesting. Um, that's for the Z battery. So uh, that's on a photography videography school. Uh, Mirrorless MY said, hi from New York. Thanks so much. And he gave a thumbs up. Thank you so much for that. Um, Ron said, I'm putting a cage. Uh, I think putting a cage makes your camera bulky and makes some brides a bit nervous seeing that big rig in their face. Yeah, it, well, that could be the case, but it's more the fact that it is, does make it bulky, uh, Ron. And I just like to, you know, just grab these cameras and be as, as small as possible, lightweight. And like I said, if you look at the video I just put of Kiara up, a lot of that video was handheld and it's, it's perfectly stable. And I'm just standing there like this. Just brace yourself when you're doing it, you know, sort of brace yourself like this. Uh, if you want to, you can have an anchor point up to your face, so that will anchor into your face like that. But the stabilization on these, as long as you brace yourself and really bring it into your body and hold it, um, you'll get a good result. And not having a cage on, for me, just, just makes it so much easier to hold over a day. Um, Obviously, I think Michael's saying this later on, videographers, though, full-on videographers will have it because they attach so much stuff to it, you know, like all your microphones, lights, things like that. Because remember, you shouldn't be attaching things to this because this is the weakness of your Sony camera. So if you're putting lights on there, you're potentially going to damage this. Um, that, that way, you know, if it hits, that actual um, flash mount's going to pop out. That hot shoe is going to pop off. Uh, so yeah, I don't recommend doing that. So if you're a videographer, I'd definitely be using cages. And I think Michael deleted it, but you should put it back on Michael because it, it is true. If you're a videographer, you would use a cage. Um, what else have we got there? Um, Mark said, umbrella is fine, but watch the beach uh, blowing it away. Yeah, and that can be an issue, Mark. Yeah, and I've had a few of them. Um, but I'll always um, try if I can to protect it and hold it fairly close to the end. I've, very, I've had very few um, umbrellas that actually have been damaged, believe it or not. Uh, and they're that cheap. I'll just buy, a, I'll just carry a few of them. Um. <laughs> Dragon said, superstition, open up an umbrella in the house. Um, ben said, been going for an hour and a half, I know. It's uh, shocking. Go and have a wee, David. <laughs> Uh, Marcus said, uh, any news on the A6700? No, I think that we're not going to hear anything until Photokina. Michael said, the cage, it's just for video work like interviews or events. Yeah, which is what I was saying. Uh, you, don't have, you don't have help but need the full package like mics, monitor, etc. Yeah, and I agree. Uh, if you're doing full-on videography, a cage is really good. Um, Marcus said, sorry, news, not sure what that was about. Um, Dragon said 35mm 1.4 versus 
35 2.8. Not sure it's worth me upgrading stills only. Oh, look, it is. There's, there is a huge difference between 1.4 and uh, the 35 2.8. It's certainly worth it for me. It just depends how, obviously, if you, if you don't really want to shoot wide open all the time, I love shooting at 1.4, particularly bridal stuff, and I adore that, that look. Um, 2.8 is not really enough for me, but like I said, Kerry will always use a 2.8, and she likes that. It's a personal thing. For me, it's definitely worth it. Um, but the main thing between these two, though, is that de-clicked aperture ring. Um, for video, it's fantastic to be able to just scroll that aperture ring and just move it without it stepping. Uh, and that really makes an amazing advantage for video. But you were talking about just stills. Uh, the 2.8 though is still a great lens though. So yeah. Um, Savas is just saying hi. So we're at the end basically of where it is. So if you haven't seen the Sony A9 overheating video, I'm going to repost it. I'm going to delete it and repost it. And I'll just repost it due to, you know, to make sure people can have a look at it because it's quite funny. Um, so I'll repost that up there as well. Um, and um, that's probably about all we need to talk about today because we've been going for one hour, 30 minutes. I'm going to be in trouble from everyone again. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for the donation. That was um, um, Tony, I'm De Brown, and also um, Chris Imra, uh, Im Imara. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Chris, anyway, thanks so much for those donation, guys. Really appreciate it. Um, Michael said, bye, David. Sign off. Thanks for sharing so much for your uh, time with us. Uh, respect. Um, that's about all. Any questions, please leave those down below uh, because I will always get back to people about that as well. Uh, make sure you check Kiara's video out um, because I posted that yesterday. I love it, showing Melbourne in winter. Uh, so have a look at that if you haven't checked it out, because that's different. I've shot that with a 35 1.4 for a change. And have a look at it too, how well the Sony cameras work handheld. A lot of that was with, particularly where it's got Kiara up close face, they were done handheld. So have a look at those. Uh, and let me know what you think about that too in that video. All right, guys, that's all for now. If you can, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, stack if you have, but I'd love it if I could get some more. Just makes more people watch it. Join our photography group, the Photography Videography School. Uh, and I'll see you all again soon for the next video. Have a great day, guys. Bye, everyone.